Cesium has quite a surprising use. It's used to measure time. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but you could define one second as a fraction of a day. One sixtieth of a minute, which is a sixtieth of a, an hour, which is then a twenty-fourth of a day. But the trouble with that is that you'd never be able to tell whether the Earth was going slower or speeding up because the length of the day would change and you wouldn't notice it. So the way that physicists define the second is in terms of microwaves and the frequency of the microwaves. We need a standard, something that can define a radio wave very, very precisely. And this is where cesium comes in. The point about cesium is that it's a big atom. It can absorb microwaves. The absorption of the microwave causes an electron to move from one energy level to another. And the advantage of cesium over all other materials is that this frequency is enormously precise. It's rather like tuning a radio. I don't know if you've ever tuned a radio, but as you turn the knob, sometimes you can, don't have to be very precise, you can put it almost anywhere and you get a, your favourite station, but there are some stations where you have to adjust it very, very accurately and there's just one tiny place where you can get the right radio station. And cesium is like that. It defines the frequency very, very accurately. If you don't hit it right, it doesn't absorb the radio waves. And so you can use it as a standard to make sure that everybody has exactly the same frequency of their microwaves. And then once everybody's got the same, then it's quite easy for everybody to agree that they will count a certain number of waves as being a second. Right. Well, the reason that cesium reacts so violently is that it is a very large atom. So an electron can be removed very easily. In fact, if you dissolve cesium in water, on a very short time scale, a millionth of a second or so, it dissociates into cesium plus and an electron. And the energy of the electron interacting with the water is enough to separate the two. And once the electron is in the water, it then reacts with the water so that H2O dissociates into a hydrogen atom and OH minus. So in fact, what you're making is a cesium salt, which is rather like caustic soda, it's a strong alkali, and hydrogen. And it is the rapid formation of hydrogen gas that causes part of the shock of the reaction. And then the hydrogen will usually catch fire and react with oxygen in the air to give you a small explosion, or a big one, depending how much cesium you've used.